G'day trendsetters, Tim here from Hunch and Brewing. Just uh, going to catch up on um, a couple of beer reviews are a bit, over, a bit overdue, which I've um, failed to record. And also, we've got a beer from um, Chris Park from House Park Brewing. Um, he's got a Colshi shared with me. I managed to meet up with him the other day, uh, last week, down at um, the West End there in Brisbane, down an archive, and a couple of beers. Good to catch up and finally meet him. Been chatting with him for a while now, so um, anyway, Park goes brewed a Kolsch, and um, he's given me a. Uh, we swapped beers. I gave him uh, one of my big stouts. I brewed, and uh, he's been kind enough to repay the favour with a Kolsch. So um, I'm just gonna just got it out of the fridge, so I won't um, open it up just yet. I just want to talk about some of the stuff that. Uh, some of the things Parko and I spoke about, um, one thing in particular was um, kombucha and cultured foods. And um, he shared a couple of YouTube links which he's been following. And um, yeah, it's, it's uh, kind of got me excited and uh, inspired me to start doing some um, some uh, probiotic cultures and, and uh, make some sriracha sauce and that type of thing. So. Pretty excited about that. I'm in Brisbane at the moment, away from the family at work, so um, uh, obviously won't be doing any of that until I get back, but hopefully I can get my boys involved and um, get them to uh, start doing some some little mini kombucha brews. So. Okay, so it's been a little bit now. Um, I'm gonna crack this uh, colch that old Parko has given to me. Cheers, Parko. Uh, he's poured this straight off a keg and um, he was a little concerned about a couple of little aspects of it, um, but anyway, let's pour her up and see how we get on. Okay, so there it is in all its glory. It's starting to form a bit of a hit. I'm not going to waste too much time on it. It's a hot day in here in Brisbane. I just been home, got home from a long walk, so. Um, I'm going to just get tucked straight into it. He, with this beer, he was um, concerned about a little um, an off flavour with a. He explained it to me like a corn type. Um, corn was what he said so I'm um, just I can see what he means it's not a bad thing I, I think he might be on the money when he just said he hasn't got enough bitterness to counteract the malts and that's sort of playing with it a bit um, <clears throat> Chris is a brew in a bag brewer and this is probably the first time I've ever tasted a beer that's been shared that's uh, come from a brew in a bag system Anyway, cheers Paco, thanks for the beer, thanks for sharing it with me, good to meet you and um, hopefully we can uh, trade some more beers at some stage. I'm going to get stuck into it and I'll come back with, my, with the thoughts I've got on it. Anyway, <clears throat> I'll give my thoughts on this beer there Chris, it's, um, there's nothing wrong with it, put it that way, very smashable and it's probably what I'm going to do in a second is smash this because um, it's, it's quite easy to drink. I know what you're saying. There is something. There is something there. I can't put my finger on it. it was very low on bitterness. Um, I know you used um, to use Halatau and Tetniang, both quite low alpha acids, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, I'd hit it a bit harder if I was going to rebrew this next time, if I were to. Um, my Hill Melon Kolsch, I used. I used quite a bit um, in the whirlpool. Um, yeah, and, and then again in the dry hop. Um, Probably not to style, but geez, it tasted good. And um, if I was going to give you any advice on this beer, that's probably what I'd do, is just hit it a bit harder. Um, you see 28 grams of Tet Yang at, oh, sorry, of Halatau at 30 minutes. We'll probably double that, triple that. Um, 
in uh, yeah and sort of make that a five or a ten minute ten or five minutes um, but anyway not picking on it I'm just giving you some feedback and um, that's a delicious beer mate um, we're gonna get stuck into this and come back with some other notes and other stuff I want to cover off okay so I just wanted to touch on some beers which I'd been uh, very uh, fortunate to receive <clears throat> and there was two beers one was two from Stas uh, from Stas Brewing uh, one was his Black Hole McKellar, um, Black Hole McKellar, um, McKellar's Black Hole that uh, he he brewed, and also the Black Forest Cake, which um, if you check out his channel, he's got a brew days of both of those, um, which was the Black Forest Cake was um, racked on racked some cherry racked onto cherries or yeah, racked cherries into it, and. Um, for reasons which I've told Stas and also Dino that why I didn't film, they know they know the reasons why. Um, but yeah, we had a dark beer tasting at my place one night, and um, these beers were part of it. Um, just want to give Dino some feedback on his um, Velvet Merlin, um, which was um, which was yeah, it was, it was a very very nice beer. So Dino's got a got a um, a YouTube uh, video of of that. I'm not uh, up with how to put links in just just yet, but. The, the notes that I had on that was um, it was chocolatey, it was perfect com uh, carbonation. It was a sensational beer. I think it was around about 4.9 or 5 percent. Um, Dino just gets to nail those carbonation points and bottle condition beers every time. It's a uh, it's a skill the old master's got there. That uh, I don't know how he keeps doing it, but he just keeps doing it every time. Um, the only little thing was that it was maybe a touch thin, but I'd take nothing away from that beer. That was um, <clears throat> there was two other guys there with me, and that was one of the things I noticed. It was a little bit thin, but still a very, very, very good beer. Um, and the notes on Stas's Black Hole, McKellar, and his and his um, Black Forest Cake, they're both the same. They had low carbonation, which is not a bad thing. Um, they were both outstanding beers and both delicious. And we all agreed that two people, the other guys um, that were with me that night. Um, were very much in favour of the uh, black forest cake over the of the McKellar, but <clears throat> yeah, that was that was sensational that um, BFC the black forest cake stash. So, um, other stuff. Uh, what else has been going on? Uh, we've got a little bit of a competition. So, a bit of a competition. There's a few guys in it um, where we're brewing a a Russian Imperial Stout. It's just a big stout. The only rules were it was over ten percent. And um, had to be brewed by end of October, and and Grant Bar Grant Baker and his Barrel Club are going to be the judges. So we've got to get it to him before the new year. And um, there's no real judging criteria, just on which beer he likes the best, I guess. So there's a few of us entering into that. Um, it's just a bit of a friendly uh, learning journey, to be honest. Uh, I've never brewed one before, so I just managed to. Um, get mine in it came out at 10.1% didn't quite attenuate as much as I would have liked and that's also a learning curve I think I need some oxygen um, which is the next thing on the list of uh, things to buy for my little brew setup um, get some some O2 and maybe pitch a bit more yeast focus on my yeast health for these bigger beers uh, finished at 10.1 I was hoping it'd come out a little bit more probably 10.6 <clears throat> or so uh, but I managed 28 Grolsch bottles, so 28 450 ml bottles, and I got seven and a half liters in a um, yeah, in a nine liter keg there. Which yeah, I might um, see how we go, but maybe put some um, uh, some oak and maybe some bourbon and vanilla or something in it. See how we go. Things the time's going to be pretty constrained when I get home, so family first on that one. Um, the other thing. To add to that, yeah, so I did a brew day and I'll, I'll chuck some some footage in here. I didn't uh, record too much, um, but yeah, look, it was a bit of an experiment. It was a day where I learned a lot about um, how much my system could do. Turns out I can get probably 15 kilos or more in 
Um, I've got, I think it was just under 15 kilos. I reckon I could have squeezed a bit more in if I really tried. Um, it's still a massive grain bill. Um, I learned a lot. I still had sort of 10, 30 or 1.03 uh, running off, <clears throat> which I, which I didn't, um, I didn't even think about. I could have made um, another beer out of that and um, ended up sort of just wasting because I didn't have the fermentation space or the time. And yeah, a lot, I learned a lot. Um, but anyway, that uh, that beer I haven't even tasted yet. Obviously, the sample I've tasted. Um, it's hard to tell. Well, I did have some issues with um, bottle con bottle conditioning. So I was, if anyone's got any ideas or can tell me, um, you know, some ideas or what they think. What I thought I carb sorry I ferment under pressure. And there was a slight little bit of carbonation in 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 the um, in the beer. reached out for advice on how much bottling um, measurement to put in for for each bottle um, so I've got I've got a few bottles there that might be over carbonated and I've got some that might be under carbonated so it all depends how that turns out so anyway I'm gonna give it three months um, put a best a best after date on it so give it actually three months to um, carbonate and I'm gonna send some out got a couple for Liz from two hands brewing Oh, sorry, one for Les, one for Stas, and um, yeah, I'll share some others around as well. I've got one for Gash there as well, and that's what I gave Paco. So um, yeah, after January, tenth of January, I think was the best best after date I put on that. So um, we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, but I'm I'm getting into my dark beers. I quite enjoy them. Um, big ones like that, obviously, you know, you're not going to drink too many of them. They're a bit of a a, a nighttime end of the night sort of beer so I called that fluent in gibberish because I think if you have uh, pardon me have a couple of points of that then you'd be fluent in gibberish I'd, I'd imagine so uh, there's a few sort of uh, things on the outlook for me I'm a bit unsure of what's happening at home with regards to my brewing but um, yeah we'll keep you updated on that but got a Got a couple of things in the pipeline. So many things I want to brew, but working away from home um, really limits the ability time-wise. And um, anyway, it's Tim from Huntsman Brewing. Cheers, Parco, Dino, Stas. Thanks for sharing the beers with me. Um, I've just found a uh, a place in uh, Milton, um, up in Caxton Street, just up the road, I walk past it every day. It's, I, I know the bar, bar's been there for a long time, it's called Brewski, but they've just started a a place underneath, they've built a bottle shop which is called My Beer Dealer, and um, I've managed to get a hold of a founder's backwards bastard, and there's some KBS um, which have just come in, and I'll be grabbing a couple of those and sending out some of those to the boys that... Uh, that uh, some of the some of the Kiwi guys which can't um, easily access it. So anyway, that's me, Tim from Hudson Brewing. Take it easy, and I'll uh, see you again next time.